Hi, my name is Dr. Samantha Slotnick and I'm a behavioral optometrist. I specialize in working in vision therapy and rehabilitation. I want to share an activity today which I like to call Thumb Pinky Virgin's Rock. This is a modification which I developed off of the Brock string, which is one of the most powerful um, ways that we can extend a patient's sense of space by using a string and working it along what we call the z-axis, this dimension going out from the body center. And so this particular activity has an advantage in that it's tapping into the body's inherent sense of space and depth. And it's, um, in this way, a multi-sensory integration activity. We're tapping into the body's position, the body's location, uh, the body's sense of um, extension, the uh, tactile sense, which is a really powerful signal back to the brain because it's such a charged signal when you touch something with a fingertip, the ocular proprioception, the feeling of the eyes as they make changes looking at one location or another location, and when they do so, they converge or they diverge. So when the eyes change position, they make a change in the muscle tension in the eyes. And you're tying all of that with the cognitive knowledge of where your body is located and also with the visual experience of what things look like as you change your location of your eyes, as you change your position of your eyes, and how that actually appears different and start, starts to enhance the sense of separation between objects when you're looking in three-dimensional space, okay? So this is a very simple activity, but a very powerful tool for developing and transferring the body's natural sense of space and localization from a body sense, a motor sense, to a visual sense that doesn't rely on the body so that you can eventually subtract the body out of the picture and transfer it entirely to a visual sense of depth without relying on touch. Okay, that's the goal here. So, thumb pinky virgin's rock starts with using two hands. They're going to be symmetric because body symmetry is a really powerful way of amplifying any signal. Okay, you're going to use the non-dominant hand along the midline. So I'm going to just try to line myself up with the camera so you see that my nose is obviously along the midline. My thumb is going to be right in front of my nose and the pinky is also along that same line. Okay, I'm going to rotate to the side so you see the separation. And now watch my eyes as I switch from looking at the thumb to looking at the pinky. My eyes are going to converge looking at the thumb and now they're going to diverge looking at the pinky. Thumb, pinky. And so that change that I'm experiencing in the feel of the muscles around the eyes is tied in to the arm extension because the body knows where its posture is holding the arm. It's tied into the body position because the body knows that when my hand is in this orientation, the thumb points towards me and is closer. The pinky points away from me and is farther. It ties into now as I explore or probe with my dominant hand, the tactile experience of thumb touching thumb, always like with like, okay? Thumb touching thumb, pinky touching pinky. I'm always going to look with my eyes first, tapping the thumb with the thumb and I might tap it a few times because repeated taps are, are like sending repeated signals from that same location in space, okay? And then pinky with pinky, a few taps because that sends a stronger signal. And now as I do this, what I'll start to appreciate is a change in my visual experience, okay? First, you notice that when you look at the thumb, the background actually starts to look like two pinkies, not just one pinky, but they look slightly doubled. And that's called physiological diplopia. That's normal. That when you look at the thumb, which, which is a central fixation, the non-central point is on a different area of the retina. It's a little farther away from the center, and that is, um, it's a more peripheral point, okay? 
that is not going to appear when they're both on the midline, not going to appear like it's in the same space. It's normal that when you are not looking at the pinky, it should appear a little doubled in the background. As I look at the pinky, well then the thumb actually also doubles up in the foreground. It's easier usually to notice the pinky doubled in the background because the pinky is thinner relative to the thumb and the thumb is a little thicker but also closer so it's, it's even thicker. So frequently patients will notice the pinkies go double first. Some patients, depending on if they have an eye turn, may have an easier time noticing a foreground object is double or a background object is double. Okay, so now they're going to, as, you, as the patient looks back and forth between the thumb and notices the pinky, they start to realize that they notice the other finger doubled before they make the change to look at it, okay? And so in going back and forth, they use physiological diplopia, which um, invites them to use a larger area of their retina to experience vision. So when they do that, they're actually expanding how much of their eye they're using at a given point in time. By repeating this activity multiple times in a day, even if it's only for a few cycles back and forth, they start to get this sense of depth interval, of space between the two fingers. And that expands usually as they work with it. Now I like to give this to patients who have difficulty with compliance because this is something you can always take it with you, you always have it with you. And what I like to do is to give some sort of a trigger, something to think about to get them to think, oh, I really should pick up my hand and start doing that activity. The easiest one that I like to use is the television. If you're watching um, a show, some sort of a series, and you get to a commercial break, well, use that time instead of skipping past it if you T-vote it, use the time anyway. And just put up your hand and do your thumb pinkies and practice it for a few cycles because now you're actually using your brain to pay attention to the television at the same time. Well, guess what that does? It expands the room because now you're thinking about your thumb and your pinky and the television across the room and the program that you also want to watch and so you have a larger sense of space extended beyond the body. This is one of the greatest ways that you can start transferring your appreciation of depth from a body sense of spatial dimension to a visual sense of spatial dimension by integrating across multiple sensory modalities.